Hello students, in this video we'll discuss how to compute double integrals over boxes. Let's consider a function z equals f of xy defined on a box or a rectangle r in this rectangle r will be the interval x will reside between a and b and y will reside between c and d so these are my x limits and these are my y limits in other words what this rectangle is is this rectangle r is the set of all points x and y such that x is between a and b and y is between c and d now we've seen previously how we can find this what this symbol means then the double integral over this rectangle r that's my region of f of x y dA is the volume is the volume what is the volume above r and below z equals f of x, y. Now, when we transition to higher dimensional integrals, we'll move away from this notion of volume and we'll start thinking of these things as average values. Because if we recall what the approximation was, the approximation was the sum, k goes from 1 to n, the sum, l goes from 1 to m, f of x k star y l star and then I had a delta x delta y which was b minus a over n times d minus c over m. Now the total number of sum ends I have here is m times n so there's n times m terms and we're dividing by up to this factor of b minus a d minus c m times n so i have a sum a sum of m times n terms divided by n times n so what this represents is this represents b minus a times d minus c times an approximate average value and so what we'll use in the future is we'll use the context that this really represents an average value up to a scalar multiple of the functions. Now, of course, when we go to an infinite region, things get more complicated, but we want to keep this interpretation in the back of our mind because in higher dimensions, when I have w is equal to the function of x, y, and z, then there's no notion of volume anymore. We have notions of hypervolume, but even though hypervolume might not make geometric sense, we have a notion of average value, which always makes sense no matter how many independent variables you have in your problem. Now, we ask the question, how do I compute something like this without having to pass to a limit of Riemann sums? And we have this beautiful theorem of Fubini, and so what Fubini's theorem says is the following. This is Fubini's theorem. What Fubini's theorem states, it says that if you want to do the double integral over your rectangle R of f of x, y, dA, you can do this one of two ways. You can integrate from A to B, integrate from C to D, f of x, y, dy, dx, or you can integrate from c to d, integrate from a to b of f of x, y, dx, dy. And when you do either of these iterated integrals, you iterate these integrals as follows. What you do is you'll first do this innermost integral. And when you do this innermost integral, when you're doing a dy integral, you would treat x as a constant. If you did it this way, you would do an x integral first, and then you would treat y as a constant. So you do these iterated integrals, and that makes the cal that reduces the calculation from this abstract Riemann sum to two integrals or two partial integrals or two iterated integrals. So let's see an example of how we would do this. Here's an example. And so this whole thing over here is Fubini's theorem. It says that you can do either order you want. It's a very, very powerful theorem. And so if I was asked, for example, to find the double integral over what rectangle? Over the rectangle 0, 1 for x and 1, 2 for y of x times y plus 
3y. And then I would say dA. Well, what I would immediately do is I would immediately apply Fubini's theorem. These are my x limits and these are my y limits over here. And so if we were to do this, we would say this is the integral. I'd say x goes between 0 and 1, and y goes between 1 and 2 of a xy plus 3y d what? D, the 1 to 2 are my y limits, so I put the y first, then I do a dx. So let's do a y integration. This is the integral from 0 to 1. And then I'm going to do a y integral of this. So what we'll have over here is we'll have an x times y squared over 2, because that would be the antiderivative of this with respect to y. And then plus 3 over 2 y squared. And then y goes from what to what? y goes from 1 to 2, and then I have a dx that's left over. And so if we were to plug in these limits, what will I have? I'm going to have the integral from 0 to 1 of x. When I plug in y equals 2, this is going to turn into a 2, so that's going to be a 2x. When I plug in 2 over here, I'm going to have a 4 times 3 halves. That's going to be a plus 6. So a 2x plus 6 is my first thing. And from that, I'm going to subtract up when y is equal to 1. So that's going to be an x over 2, x over 2. And then when I plug in 1 over here, I'm going to have a 3 over 2. So plus 3 over 2 dx. And now let's count what we have. We're going to have 3 halves, 3 halves x, because 2x minus x, two x minus x over 2 is 3 halves x. Then I have 6, which is 12 over 2 minus 3 over 2. That's going to be a 9 over 2. So I have plus 9 over 2 dx. And now this will integrate to what? This will integrate to 3 over 4x squared plus 9 over 2x from 0 to 1. The 0 limit won't give me anything. So what I'll have here is I'll have 3 quarters plus 9 halves. Now, of course, 9 halves is really what? That's really 18 over 4. So I have 18 over 4 plus 3 over 4. That's 21 over 4. So 21 over 4 is the double integral over this rectangle of this function over here. In further videos, we'll see that when you have a product of functions of x and y, what we can do is we can actually split the integrals into a product and use something called rectangular separation or box separation. But the important thing to catch from this video is that if I'm giving you a function of two variables and ask you to integrate over a rectangle, you will do a double integral, and the double integral will turn into what? Two single integrals, where you're doing two partial or two iterated integrals. Two, you can choose whichever variable you want to integrate first. You can integrate the y first, if that's easier, or you can integrate the x first. So Fubini's theorem gives you an avenue by which you can do a problem multiple ways, and oftentimes that will be helpful as a calculational device when you're trying to do an integral quickly. Thank you very much.